Hello everyone, so today is the 15 minutes with Academia and today with me is Professor Muthmil and we are very grateful that he had given us 15 minutes of his time. So sir, uh, let's have a little ice break with you so that later we can get into an interview where we can ask any question we want. <laughs> okay. We have a set of few questions for the ice break. Uh, first of all, let's uh, talk about your hobbies and interests. Oh, my hobbies. Well, yeah. uh, right now I am very much into diving. Okay. So I am uh, diving, uh, diving almost every weekend. And I'm actually trained to become a dive master, oh. meaning that I will be able to guide my own tours and have my own uh, uh, clients. Oh. Uh, but you know, this is what I'm doing now. But you know, I have um, I try to discover as many hobbies as possible. So before that, I was doing you know carpentry, um, also you know uh, building an aquarium, and Ooh. you know. Many, many diverse things. I, I've seen the guitar as well. Yeah, you're right. I also built this, uh, this guitar. Yeah. So we'll get five minutes of that too. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Okay, so uh, what do you prefer, books or the movies? Uh, mm, I, I, I like both, to be honest, right? Yeah. I mean, I have some really, I mean, there are some books I really love and there are also some movies I really like. Uh, I But I have to admit, it's harder and harder to find time to sit down and read. And you know, read, right? So yeah. I think I'm definitely really watching more movies than reading books. When we ask you which is your favorite book, which book come up in your mind? Oh, uh, I guess that would be uh, uh, Roger Zelazny, uh, Nine Princes of Amber. So yeah. it's, it's a very old school uh, fantasy series. So I read it when I, when I was like 13 oh. years old and it still like very strongly resonates with me. That's pretty good. So what is the uh, interesting memory that you have to any place which is attached? Uh, a, a memory? Um, hmm. I can't think of any... any <laughs> Getting a PhD degree. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was, yeah, that's actually a pretty strong memory. So I remember that uh, I finished giving my presentation and uh, I was being asked a question by the evaluation panel. Right. And my mom started crying because she thought that I'm about to fail. Oh. So she was never at the, at the defense and she thought there were some problems with my work and she didn't realize this was like perfectly natural uh, thing that happens when you, you know, when you, when you graduate. So yeah, that's, that's a pretty fun memory. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty. Uh, so which country would you visit again? The one you have visited till now? Um, uh, I would say, well, there, there are many countries in Europe where, so I have my family in Denmark and uh, also in Germany and in Poland, so I'm visiting those countries a lot. Um, for holidays, I guess uh, Sardinia. I mean, uh, yeah, basically that area. Yeah. I pretty, really like Pretty it. good place. Yeah. So how do you relax a day after you have a hectic work from like research and everything? How do you relax <laughs> yourself? Um, I really like walking, so I uh, walk maybe one hour plus a day, so, so to and from work. Uh, I like to play computer games. <laughs> oh, really? So, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I'm a computer gamer since nine years. Uh, which old. which is the best game you think one should play at least? Oh, I guess Fallout series. Fallout. Fallout, right. Uh, I also deeply enjoyed uh, the Baldur's Gate okay. series. And yeah, I, I, think, I think those are, those are pretty good. Yeah. And so which technology that you are using currently and you want in like for after five or 10 years, it should improve. Which is that uh, one technology you would like? Uh, well, I think um, the AI assistants should, um, should, I mean, they're already pretty good. getting pretty good now, but I think it would be very nice to delegate some things like, you know, replying to obvious emails or keeping track of the calendar. So I'm, Pretty sure those things will really improve a lot in the next few years. Yeah. And what's the best thing of your day? The best normal thing of my day. day. Yeah. Uh, the best thing of my day. Oh, that's pretty. That's pretty tough to say. Um, I do enjoy getting home and sitting in my comfy chair, <laughs> and you know, just opening my laptop and catching up with things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. So let let's start a little bit from your uh, academia now. I have I, have, I have I was going through your. Uh, education it was pretty cool that you have went to max and then did a post on mm -hmm. so uh, what we as our students uh, all our community have a thought that it's getting very tough to get in max Planck. is it true um i i to be to be honest i'm not really sure how, how the situation is now 
Um, of course, many people try to get mm. in there. Yes. But I also think, um, or at least that's what I heard from my colleagues from Europe, is that fewer and fewer people from Europe are interested in doing science. So, I uh, so so you know I think they would rather go to industry after getting uh, you know their uh, bachelor or master degree. Right. So, uh, so I, I think there are there are many positions which are which might be tough to fill in uh, in Europe. So. Uh, of course, everybody wants to go to, to Max Planck, but I think, at least from Europe, fewer people might be interested in actually doing uh, a PhD, so we should definitely try. Okay, uh, as, as young as uh, youngsters we are, we are more inclined towards the uh, animal culture and all those uh, work, but uh, how come that a, a person should have an interest towards the plant? Mm -hmm. Because it's very tough to get there. Yeah. Because a uh, lot of mechanism and a lot of explorations on there. How did you get your interest towards the plant? Yeah. Um, well, uh, you know, I am. Uh, I, I think every organism has some mystery, right? right? So I mean, uh, of course, humans are most of because of the biomedical uh, background. But you know, every organism has very intricate and very interesting solutions to uh, you know the different. Uh, functions that they want to achieve so to me actually I was very agnostic about the organism that I want to study so uh, I was interested you know in, in yeast in, in uh, animals and in plants and basically the way I uh, the reason I ended up with plants was because <laughs> the professor who was studying plants was uh, uh, had uh, an office which was the easiest to find. Okay. <laughs> so I just went in there and I asked, like, do you have a project? And he said yes. And then I joined. And then you know I found you know joy in, um, in studying plants. But if I went to a different floor, it would probably be studying yeast or or animals, right? Oh, that's so crazy. Yeah. So you know I'm, I'm not really. I, I don't think it's it should really like uh, be very focused on the organ organism mm. because everything is interesting, right? Right. I mean, of course, if you want to save lives, uh, you know, you should study biomedicine, right? But if right. you're interested in science, try to be more open-minded, I think. So, uh, related to this, what is the emerging field that you think uh, could be going up related to uh, your uh, research point of view? Yeah, I think AI. I mean, you know, AI is um, like exploding now yeah. and it's also exploding in, in uh, life and plant sciences, right? So, right now you can... Um, actually use large language models to uh, understand the language of DNA right right and you can then use those large language models to make very powerful uh, gene function predictions okay. so uh, related to this thing I have a query like people say that back then its research was tougher as the internet came in and now AI is coming the research will be going to be very easy but very competitive because everyone has access of everything mm, yeah um, I'm I'm not sure if it will be like this. I mean, my prediction would be that uh, we will just have to make more and more more results, more analyses. Right? Right. I mean, if you look at some of the older papers, right. you can see they have maybe two, three rather simple figures, right? right. I mean, nowadays the, the papers have many figures, right. right? They have many supplemental figures. So I don't think it's going to be easier. I think we will just be required to make produce even more and more, more right. and more and data. Yeah. Um, yes. I mean, also, I would say more and more productivity. I think we definitely have to be more productive now than people were twenty or thirty years ago. Right. I think we have to really buckle up the things because we have been given a lot of opportunities right in our hands. Yes, but also the competition, as you said, yeah. is, is tougher, right? I mean, there are there are lots of groups now, um, so so we compete uh, more, and that means we have to work harder. I right. would say. So, so my feeling is, I mean, don't shoot me, old scientists. <laughs> that you know, twenty, thirty years ago, I think things were more relaxed. Right. Now it's more. Tough. It's, uh, now, now, now it's a bit tougher, and I don't think it will get better. So, so coming up with the same thing that you are saying that we have to work hard. How should we plan our research projects? Because as a person gets into a science world, he doesn't know anything about it. Yeah. So what, what's your uh, take? How should uh, one go towards the research project or the research thoughts in order to make a paper out of it, like a good one that, that one yeah. you are yeah. predicting? Yeah. Um, well, I think you have to really breathe, uh, breathe in the project, right? I mean, you, you should really immerse yourself in this. 
right? You should uh, you should think a lot about it, right? And uh, just, just do your best. Right? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? It's it's the review articles which could give you ideas of the research article or the uh, traditional books which are there. Well, how will one should go for the thoughts to have? Yeah, I mean, when uh, people join my group, I typically uh, make them write a review on uh, the topic that they're going to be working on. So uh, they are, of course, not experts on uh, the topic, but because they have to write a review, they have to read a lot right. and they have to put it down in writing in their own words. And in this way, they learn, um, they learn about the topic. So I think actually writing a re review is a very good way of getting into a topic. Okay. Uh, one more thing. Uh, how much? Like, uh, it's it's uh, it varies with people to people. How many pages should one read? So, what's your prediction? <laughs> pages. Yeah, people used to think like that. That this much pages at least in a day, like twenty, fifty. That that's a way of people oh, reading. Say, reading. Yes. Oh, uh, I really, I really don't know. I mean, I I'm not thinking uh, in those terms. I mean, I think uh, yeah. How to put it? I think my people are are, mo are mostly. I mean, they are reading, of course, right. right? We have journal clubs, but I don't think I never said anybody had to read oh. one, two, five, ten pages a day. I think uh, you learn most by having your own project, right? right. And then uh, you know, very often you have a project and there is no solution for it. You have to come up with a solution, and to find a solution, you have to read, mm -hmm. right? So um, I don't people I don't tell people read ten pages a day. I told them solve this problem oh. and then very organically they have to go online and find maybe some similar problem which was solved so um, I would rather have this kind of a more organic uh, read as much as you have to approach rather than fixed approach like this yeah. that's that's really nice way in this way uh, one has been indulged into doing that's really nice so uh, as we know that you are a professor as well so what is your teaching philosophy how you go to uh, the class and how yeah. you make them interest yeah well I mean you know I'm from uh, I'm from Europe I grew up in, in Denmark where you know you call the professor by the first name right so the hierarchies are, are very flat so uh, I, this is the same attitude I have towards my students I mean they insist on calling me prof but I'm kind of just call me Mark right? and then you know I try to be approachable right so if there's a question I always say please come to me ask me a question I also set up a discord channel so that they can ask questions uh, after hours I also involve students from the previous years to be teaching assistants in the current year okay and um, uh, the project I give my students uh, is uh, related to my work so the projects that they're getting is real research right so I'm giving them gene expression data nobody has ever looked at before and I'm asking them to predict gene function so they are doing real research which sometimes even gets published in, in, in the paper so uh, several years now that uh, the project that they were working on my other students have been published in a peer-reviewed journal right so uh, you know I'm, I'm trying to make it clear to them look what you're doing will not be thrown into the garbage can after grading it's actually useful right so I think this keeps them motivated that's that's really crazy so uh, what what is the technology that you are thinking that one should be involving in education in order to get more out of it because as a, as a uh, professor you have seen a lot of students till now and there must be a lot of people doing a lot of mistakes say, which one can improve in order to get best out of it so what's that uh, regular mistake you have mm -hmm. uh, well, I mean, I think the students should take advantage of the, the uh, AI, right. which is coming out now. I mean, we are using ChatGPT a lot in our uh, research, right? So <laughs> I think everybody has ChatGPT open and very often they ask questions like, how do I write this function in Python? Or I have this error, what does it mean, right? right? I am using ChatGPT to ask questions about the paper. So for example, you know, when I write a paper, I don't understand most of it in the first read, right? I mean, there are some concepts I don't understand or have never met. But what you can do now is you can upload a mm. paper to GPT and then you can ask, what does this passage mean? And then it will explain to you in exactly the way you want what it means. So I think the students nowadays should treat ChatGPT as a tutor, right? Okay. A deeply personalized tutor which they can use to answer any question. Right. 
So uh, I think the students nowadays have many more opportunities to learn than uh, than I did when I, when I was smaller, of course. Uh, younger. So you know, you should definitely take advantage of this. So uh, do do you think that AI will get the things better or the worse? Because students now won't be going outside anywhere uh, to reach out to any person because they have everything online. So which, is it a good thing or the bad thing? Because the communication skills will be going really down because now everyone wants the way they want it. So they are getting data out of the way they, they are having. Yeah. But uh, back then what we have to, we have to reach out to a person and we have to explain our way, how he can understand, then get the answer. So yeah, yeah, yeah. don't you think that will be an issue? Well, I think uh, it's important to have as many different avenues to learn something right. uh, uh, as possible. I mean, you should not use all of them. Yeah. I mean, for example, some students um, can only learn by uh, talking to um, the professor or attending lectures. Okay. So they should definitely do that. And some people are better at asking chat GPT. So they should <laughs> do this, right? Um, but uh, I, I do think, uh, you know, communicating science is very important, right? So um, everybody should, uh, uh, sh should work on trying to uh, and mediate science in the best way possible, right? So, of course, the, the communication is still very important, right? So, uh, one more thing related to this, people say that career is very important. So, what what, and how a person determine whether his or her career at that particular moment is going right or the wrong? Oh, yeah. Because... <laughs> mm, that, that's a tough question. I, I, I think... I mean, it's, it's tough to say because, you know, everybody is different. Uh, I mean, in Europe, for example, um, <laughs> many people are doing PhD, right? So, for example, if you are done with your master's study, mm -hmm. if you want to stay in academia, you have to almost do a PhD. There is no other choice. Right. I mean, you cannot be hired as a somebody who finished master's and just works, right? So, uh, so I think you know, if you want to stay in academia, just graduate and consider doing a, a PhD. Mm -hmm. Uh, rather than you know just doing project officer for two three years, right? So so rather, rather try to get a degree. It's it's good to you know um, get a degree rather than you know stagnate. Okay. But again, you know everybody is <laughs> everybody is different, right? Yeah. I mean the the situation in Singapore is of course is different uh, from uh, from Europe. So um, I realize here people here people are more cautious about committing to a, to a PhD. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what I'm learning to you is the best to a person who is currently doing his bachelor's in science, whether he or she is willing to put some efforts to, in order to get into science yeah, academia, then he should go for the PhD, right? I think so, yeah. And uh, why is it that it's a, it's a big deal? I, I don't know whether it will be an issue or not. Why academia is considered more higher than the industry, even though industry pay a lot? Why well, it's considered higher? Yeah, because it, it, it's, uh, like if a person from academy is there and an industry is it's there, uh, like uh, the person who is from academy will always be appreciated more compared to the industry. Why? <laughs> I, I, I think probably better PR. I mean, uh, um, yeah, you know, academia, I guess it's it's like, you know... Chances are a bit low. <laughs> well, I mean, no, it, it looks like very... Uh, fancy. Very, very fancy, right? I mean, whether it's fancy, I don't know. Yeah. Look, I mean, I, I know some excellent scientists who are, uh, you know, uh, now working in the industry and they have, you know, very good uh, fulfilling lives, right? So I would not say one is better than the other. Um, you know, maybe if I decided to go for computer science, I'd be working in some uh, some, some company now, right? right. So um, I, I would not say one is better than the other. Yeah. Okay. If, I, I think the most important thing is you should you know, one should choose uh, something which uh, one, one uh, finds most uh, fulfilling mm. and just go for it, right? Okay, if a person is willing to join your lab as a PhD uh, and a postdoc, both are the different scenarios. For the PhD, what you would be looking uh, from him or her? What are the things of the set of the things that you will be looking at his yeah. profile? Yeah, um, well, I am looking for somebody who is um, really interested in science, right? I mean, somebody who uh, really enjoys, uh, you know, this kind of a geeky, geeky side of science, right? Somebody who is, you know, really passionate about uh, about the topic, right? Uh, I mean, I'm not looking at grades so much. It's more like this, this kind of um, impression that you know the person can really 
uh, burn for something, right? Uh, I mean, with PhD students, it's very difficult to, to right. judge because, you know, <laughs> you know, grades, I mean, they mean maybe a bit, but not, not a much. lot in my book, right? So, so it's, and it's also kind of a gut feeling as well, right? I mean, um, I mean, you know, you meet this person very shortly, then, you know, also, you know, kind of your intuition plays, plays a role, yeah. All right. Okay, so and for the poster, what should he or uh, she have with her? Yeah, okay. There it's much more clear okay. because I would expect the poster to have um, at least one uh, first author publication okay. uh, to be considered, right? So then it's very easy. You look at the publication, right? You uh, look at the author contribution and then it's very clear what kind of a, a work the person has done. Of course, um, I will also call the supervisor. Yeah. Right, and ask, okay, how is this person? Um, okay, so you, you'll, you'll reach out to, through the mail? Yeah, uh, and sometimes even calling. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. I mean, look, if I'm going to be with this person three, four years, right. it's very important. Uh, I think, you know, spending 10 minutes on the phone call is a sense. very small uh, trade off. Yeah. Oh, that's really good. Mm -hmm. So, uh, three advices that you would give to a PhD and three advices who, uh, that you would give to a postdoc who is willing to go for like academia. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, I'm not sure if I, I have three. I mean, I think for uh, for everybody right. would be uh, look, try to find passion for your project, right? Because I think if you're passionate uh, about it, you automatically uh, be good at it. <laughs> and uh, second would be uh, look, you have to be comfortable with uh, things not working, right? right? So you know try to be resilient towards uh, things going bad. I think third uh, would be also, you know, uh, talk, talk to people, right? So you should talk to, to your supervisor and also to your lab mates, right? So don't try to solve uh, those things on, the, on your own. And fourth, I mean, I'm just trying to have fun uh, <laughs> as well, right? I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's not about, you know, grinding yourself down and and you know burning out it's it's also about enjoying it and, uh, and, uh, and you know try to find your way to enjoy it yeah okay and if you would like to conclude uh, your journey till now from the time you have initiated the science how would you do that how i would conclude it yeah how would like you would like to tell to people uh well i mean you know um, to be honest i never planned for those things Right, so I, I didn't say okay. I want to be a professor when I was thirteen. Oh. It's it's uh, look. I re just really enjoyed uh, in my PhD. I had really a uh, cool project, and I had you know a lot of fun just solving those problems. And it's the, the, the other things come naturally, right? So I would say, look, don't stress about it. You know, don't try to grind yourself down to to you know land in a position, right? right? I mean, try to allow things to come more organically, and try to be happy with what you have. Right? If you if you if you're not if you're not a professor, try to be happy with a postdoc, right? For a while, and then you know try to see what else comes up, and you know find joy uh, find uh, joy in this. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Okay. And that's how <laughs> Professor he was uh, so cool and chill. Um, thank you so much. I will. We talk, I will be giving you the feedback, whichever is coming. <laughs> Outstanding. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. Yeah.